Hi everybody. Now, this is a video I've been looking forward to doing for a while because I'm finally ready to release my micro long range frame to the public. And I've been doing a lot of testing on um, a bunch of different setups with this frame and um, evolutions of this frame. And now this is finally at a stage where I'm happy with it, happy with the performance and can actually give um, decent recommendations about setups. But before I dive into a breakdown of my builds, talk about flight performance, flight time, show you flight footage and so on, let's take a little step back and look at what this whole thing is actually about and what I'm trying to accomplish here. So <laughs> the basic idea is pretty simple actually. This is a seven inch quad. <laughs> we all know these seven inch long range quads which have pretty amazing specs. They have a GPS, they have independent buzzers, they have really good flight times, they have high power output VTXs above 800 milliwatt and so on and so on. They are perfect for long range flying. Now, of course, the downside is they are expensive, they are heavy, they are loud. You cannot fly this everywhere. So my idea is, hmm, now with all these high performance micro components, can't we just scale this down <laughs> until we are below 250 grams all of weight, which will save you a lot of legal uh, trouble and legal hurdles in most of the countries. So like insurance, um, name tags, and so on, and so on, and so on. And what I came up with this, so as you can see, a very scaled down version of a seven inch. Um, so let, let's take a closer look at the frame and the, the key features of this before we dive into the builds. This whole concept was actually enabled by 4-inch T-mount props. This is the HQ T4 by 2.5 prop. Um, there's another option, which is an older, actually that's a wing prop, a 3.8-inch, if I'm not mistaken, a 3.8-inch King Kong prop, which is another option. But we started seeing 4-inch T-mount props, and this is what actually enabled this platform. So th this platform has, I'd say, two key features. First, it's a dead cat layout. What does this mean? Um, front arms move back, rear arms move back even more, and front arms moved further outside. Why am I doing this? Um, quite simply because we have a pretty small main body and pretty big props in comparison. I mean, these are four inch props, so this is pretty much um, almost the size of a five inch prop, but the body here is way smaller than on a five inch quad. So what this means is, if you have a true X or a symmetric layout of this frame, you would have the props really in view of this um, cam, of the FPV cam and the HD cam. This is a Cadex Tarsier. So we have to go through um, a lot of a lot of hassle to, to get the props out of view and really dramatically change the construction of this whole quad. But in this case, it worked. There is literally zero props in view uh, on the HD footage and on the FPV footage. Another feature of this frame is, another key feature of this frame is the electronics layout. So as you can see, there's a 16 by 16 in front and a 20 by 20. I guess you can see the mounting holes here in the back. And what this means is you can have a 16 by 16 flight controller and ESC stack in the front, running the motors um, and controlling everything. And in the back, you have a lot of place for stacking all the other electronics. So here I have two boards for the Cadex Tarsier. And I have a Rush Tank Mini VTX, which is an 800 milliwatt VTX. So this, this 20 by 20 mount in the rear just enables to carry a lot of electronics, which makes it possible to have really all these amazing features in here. I mean, this quad here has a GPS. It's got an 800 milliwatt VTX. It records five 4K footage. It's um, it's got it's even got LEDs. It's got crossfire long range system, and it's got this tiny independent buzzer. So, an incredible amount of future uh, features. And even though I didn't want to go into the build in too much detail at this point, let's just quickly put this on a scale and see how much it weighs. So it's just 146 grams. So there is, even with a uh, with bigger battery, there's a lot of margin um, for being below 250 grams. So really, really amazing, really high performance, incredible spec package we have here. Now, um, 
that's that's the basic concept I, I was working on. Of course, it wasn't easy to actually find out what uh, what kind of components to use and what setup to uh, to really make this thing worthwhile because it needs to have to be long range capable. It really needs to have a decent cruising speed and decent flight times. And I can already say this thing is doing over 11 minutes on an 850 milliamp hours free S. So let's take a closer look at some flight footage and talk a little bit about the flight performance. So what you're seeing now is um, one of those setups running on 1404s. This is a Runcam Split 3 Nano. And the battery I used is this 850 milliamp hours 3S tattoo battery. So all up weight of 220 grams. And I mean, in this case, I pushed the battery pretty hard, but you will see I get over 11 minutes and I think 20 or 30 seconds of flight time while cruising around with, uh, you, you can actually in the, um, in the little window that is showing you my, um, my FPV feed, you can see my throttle percentage at the top uh, no, right, bottom right corner, sorry. Um, and as you can see, I'm cruising around at like 20 to 30% throttle. And at this pace, I, I could maintain this pace for over 11 minutes. Uh, whilst, I mean, pushing my battery is pretty hard, but um, not too excessively hard. So I guess the flight times are really there and the cruising speed is there. As you can see, I'm, I mean, I'm not, of course, not nearly at the cruising speed of a 7-inch, but still it's a more or less decent cruising speed at only 21% throttle, so I'm, I'm far from pushing this quad end. I mean, unfortunately, I do not have a lot of footage where I'm actually flying this outdoors because I'm at the moment in northern Germany and either it's rainy or it's just incredibly windy. And one thing, to be honest, this quad doesn't like a strong wind because of its lightweight, obviously. So I, I did a lot of indoors testing, but as you can see, um, it's actually obviously possible to achieve really incredible flight times. Um, the flight performance on these 4-inch props and 1404 motors, which is the motor size I, I recommend, is pretty good. So it's got a really good punch. Um, it actually feels quite powerful. So you, flying indoors was pretty stressful, man. I had to be so careful on the throttle um, not, to, uh, not to just crash into the ceiling or the ground. So pretty, pretty powerful, but still really quite smooth. What it kind of lacks is this really locked in, super in control feeling uh, five inch quads can achieve simply because this is a pretty big surface area prop on a relatively small motor. This just makes it um, lack this kind of locked in feeling, but uh, the advantage is it's excessively smooth. I mean, this thing really runs, runs very smooth. And this is actually exactly what I won't want for a long range setup for cinematic cruising. I don't care too much about how locked in it feels. Um, it's more important that it's uh, got a decent cruising speed, good efficiency, and a, a really good smoothness to it. So I'm really quite happy with the flight performance of this quad. And actually, the one of the really nice things it's it's not very noisy. It's really pretty quiet, and that's that's really one of the main advantages of the setup over a seven inches. You can fly this almost anywhere, and it's it doesn't look scary. It's not loud. <laughs> you won't get into trouble. So um, really, I mean, I was flying this indoors in this garage. There were people driving by. No, nobody, nobody even cared a little, no problems at all. So um, really quite pleased with the flight performance. And uh, as you can see now towards the end of this video, over 11 minutes and um, really, really pretty, pretty good efficiency. So let's take a closer look at, um, at my setup and really break this down. And uh, I will try to, based on, on all the testing I did so far, I will really try to give you some um, some good recommendations on how to build this frame and which components to use to get the best performance out of it. But of course, as always, I'm, I'm open to recommendations. So if you have some ideas how I could improve this, of course, don't hesitate to leave a comment below.
right, so these are the two setups I ended up with. My final setups after going through like six or seven of them. This is my full house, high spec build where I try to put everything inside I can. And this is my lightweight build. So this one is 146 grams, this one is 120, uh, 26, so actually pretty exactly. 20 grams of uh, difference. But first let's talk about uh, what these builds have in common. So they have very similar motors. My lightweight build has 3800 kV iFlight Xing T-mount motors and my other build has FlyWoo motors, 3750 kV and honestly it just comes down to which of these motors you prefer in terms of looks and color because the construction is pretty much identical. I don't know if they are made in the same factory, but they might. They are very similar, and in my opinion, 1404 with the 4-inch HQT mount props is the way to go here. And around 3700 or 3800 kV on 3S, that's the most efficient combo in my opinion. 4S will be really hard on the 6 by 16 stacks, and um, honestly, I don't know if they uh, would put up with it. And also, it's really not necessary. 3,700 kV on 3S and these props has got a lot of punch. It's got way more power than it needs. Uh, and it really cruises nicely around 20 to 30% throttle, so no need to make this thing uh, more powerful, especially it's not a freestyle basher, it's not a racer. It's an efficient long-range build, so really my recommendation. Uh, in terms of motors, I mean, I tried a lot of stuff. I tried 1303s, they, the stator is just too small to uh, properly manage a 4-inch prop, so that really wasn't suitable. I tried higher KV um, motors, so this is the 4850 KV version of the fly, which is a 6000 KV 1404 by DYS. And I also tried these 1402 motors, um, nothing worked as well as the 1404. And I think this is sort of the minimal size uh, you need to spin this prop. This prop is surprisingly heavy and it's a pretty big surface area prop. So maybe a 1504 or 1505 would be even slightly better, but there's no option on the market. So <laughs> you should go for, uh, for 1404. Another thing these uh, two builds have in common is the VTX. So I'm using the Rush Tank Mini VTX on both of them. This is a 20 by 20, 800 milliwatt <laughs> VTX. And it's uh, got two main advantages of three. First, 800 milliwatts, <laughs> which is amazing. Uh, it's uh, it got 20 by 20 mounts. So these are these two boards here, as you can see with the two buttons, are both cleanly stacked here in the rear. Nothing's going anywhere. And the third advantage is they have pretty good um, controls just using these buttons here, which means you can free up a UART on the flight controller. And these 16 by 16 flight controllers are incredibly tiny, so you don't have a lot of UARTs that are accessible. And freeing up one of them by not using smart audio and just using this sort of button system is really a good thing. And I mean, if you're flying long range, you're not competing in a race and flying with other people and often changing your channel. And this VDX has a very, very intuitive and easy system to change band and channels with uh, this button here. So, and you really see these LEDs working. This is very simple. You can change the power with this button. So you just have to remember what these color LEDs mean and then you don't need smart audio anymore, in my opinion. So this is why I'm using this on both of these builds. I'm also using uh, Team Black Sheep Crossfire Nano receivers on both of them because just, just that's just the gold standard for long range receivers. And if you don't want to have any trust issues with your setup, you should really go for TBS Crossfire. All right, that's, uh, that's apart from the frame, of course. Um, that's what these builds have in common, and I think I didn't mention it yet. The frame, by the way, is including hardware, excluding TPU part, parts, is 36 grams. This is still the older version, it's uh, 34 grams, which has got skinnier arms. The newest version is 36 grams, around about including standoffs and, um, and screws. All right, let's have a closer look at the setup where I really tried to put the maximum amount of features in this build. 
that I could possibly put in there. So just to walk you through these components, this is a Kedex Targear 4K FPV dual lens uh, type camera. So it records 4K footage and FPV with a separate uh, with separate lenses, which really gives you a clean and um, not obstructed in any way FPV feed because uh, many of these cameras to me feel kind of foggy and they are not very sharp in the FPV feed. Not, not the case with the Targear. So the Tarsier boards, it's got two boards are here in the back. And on top we have the Rush um, Tank Mini VTX that I already mentioned. The stack here is my favorite 16x16, 16 16, it's the HGLRC. And it's got um, two fully accessible UARTs. So I can actually run the GPS. You see here, this is sort of the standard uh, go to GPS, a BN180 um, kind of cheap $10 GPS, but that works very well, specifically designed mount for it. So we have the BN here in the back, and um, since this uh, stack here has two fully accessible UARTs, I can run the GPS, run smart audio on the TX, and run my Crossfire receiver with SBUS protocol so that I only need the RX pad of the UART um, through the flight controller. So I pretty much have everything that I want. Another nice thing about this stack is that it doesn't have pin connectors between the flight controller and the ESC, but the standard uh, sort of uh, cables that you, wires that you will also see on uh, on bigger stacks. So really cool here. The LEDs here are kind of a nice touch. So I put some LED rays wire on there. This is uh, something that is produced and sold by FPVframe.ch in Switzerland. Really uh, cool product here. So a nice little light show. If you plug this quad in, let me just quickly show this to you. I mean, you, I need to, I need to really um, make the motors spin to show this to you. But I think the LEDs give it a cool touch. Now, um, yes, 4K cam, LEDs, GPS, and what we have here is a tiny, tiny little uh, buzzer, independent buzzer, so it's got a small battery. It still works even if you crash and your battery is unplugged. So, I mean, <laughs> this is very important in my opinion. I honestly forgot which make, brand makes this uh, tiny little thing. It's only like, it's only like 1.3 grams, it's really light. But, um, oh, come on, shut up. It's complaining. Um, I think you really needed this. If you're kind of seriously, flying longer ranges with this quad. Just imagine finding this small quad somewhere in higher grass or something. It's just impossible, so this is really a good investment here. Um, yeah, and as I already said, this setup here is a 146 grams and... No. Uh, sorry. I just uh, changed my scale to ounces. No, that's not what I want. I want grams, yep. So, 146 grams, roughly. I don't even know if you can see this. Let me just quickly adjust the camera. So, it's 146 grams. And if I add this A50 free S battery, which is what I did 11 minutes with of flight time, 226 grams, so I still have 20 grams of margin before I would hit the uh, the critical 250 grams. I mean, this doesn't have a battery strap at the moment, but uh, even with a battery strap, a battery strap doesn't weigh 20 grams, so no problems at all here. Now, uh, let's take a closer look at a lighter setup that's 20 grams lighter, which of course is even better for performance. So only 205 grams with the battery. So read easy here. On this one, uh, to keep things light, I did not use a GPS. I do not use a buzzer. And instead of the toys here, which is kind of heavy, I'm using a Runcam Split 3 Nano. So nano size camera, as you see, I'm just using a, we get this in focus, I'm using a little adapter here because it's 14 millimeters and not 90 millimeters. This one's got 90 millimeter camera mounts. It's just one board. And that's it. So this quad is way simpler and way lighter, which of course helps performance. I mean, I do not know what difference exactly it makes in flight time. I would have to do a little bit more testing with this. But I mean, overall, just to sum up my, my build recommendations, 
Go for a 20x20 20 20 Rush Tank VTX, go for either the iFlight or Flywoo 1404 motors, go for these HQ props. In terms of stacks, I recommend the HGLRC or you can go for the Mamba if you prefer, uh, if you prefer Diatone. And when it comes down to split type cameras, I mean there's the Cadex Toys here, there's all the run cam split um, cams. And there's the uh, Runcam Hybrid, which I haven't tested yet, which I will test next. Um, I mean, in that case, it just comes down to your personal preference. I personally like the Tarsier, although I do think it has some kind of reliability issues. I broke one by crashing and not crashing directly on the camera. Just the G-Force kind of broke the board, and the same thing happens with a happened with a Cadex Turtle. So I think. The, the Cadex cameras don't seem to be uh, very suitable for high G-Force crashes, even if you don't have a direct impact on, on one of the boards or something. So, um, yeah, these are sort of my, my final conclusions on uh, on build recommendations. Now, um, yeah, I'm, I'm really looking forward to uh, seeing, seeing you guys build some of these, so I hope many of you will be interested in this frame and um, get one cut. I will publish the files and then uh, in contact with CNC Madness in uh, Canada to uh, make this frame more accessible to you to uh, produce a bunch of them. So, yep, yeah, that's about it. If you, have, if you have any more questions about this quad, any ideas on uh, how to even further refine and improve these setups, I mean, of course, just leave a comment below and I'll try to answer as um, as many of them as I can. I mean, it shouldn't be <laughs> shouldn't be too crazy. All right, guys. Um, I hope you found this useful. And uh, of course, please don't forget to like and subscribe so you stay updated on the latest evolutions uh, of this frame. And of course, thanks for watching.